Ciao a tutti, my name is Stefano and in this video I'm going to talk about the best Greek islands for couples. Which one works best for the romantic stay or for an active time, for young couples or for old couples? If you are into nightlife or you want to have a quiet time. You know, I lived in Greece, I've been traveling to Greece for the last 30 years. I feel so old now, but I have a lot of experience there, which I would love to share with you in this video. But let's get straight away to the best islands for young couples. In this case, I give you two possibilities. The first one is Mykonos. Mykonos is world famous, obviously, for the nightlife, which is absolutely amazing and unique. Probably second only to Ibiza. But it's not only about the nightlife, it's also about the beaches, which are absolutely gorgeous. Mykonos is a small island, so you can go from beaches to beaches, from town to town with a bus very, very quickly, or you can rent a scooter and organize your time yourself. So in this respect, it's very flexible. You can stay in the old town, which is the little Venice, absolutely amazing. It's a bit noisy, but it's perfect if you want to stay next to the nightlife. If you want to have a quiet time, a quiet night, then stay outside of town. Probably accommodation is also cheaper and you get a taxi back and forward into the nightlife. The other island I suggest is Crete, especially if you are an active couple, because you have so many possibilities there for trekking and adventure. There are three main town cities. The first one is Heraklion, which has more of a city feel and personally I wouldn't suggest to stay but Refimno and Hios are absolutely gorgeous they are romantic fantastic food scene some nice bars but not that crazy nightlife as Mykonos so it's a bit different from Mykonos but still perfect for young couples Now let's move to the best islands for middle-aged couples like me. You know, the first one is Naxos. And Naxos I visited for the first time about 25 years ago. I like it, but I thought it was lacking a little bit of a nightlife. And you know what? Now I love it. Naxos is one of my favorite because it offers everything but not to the extreme. For example, you can have a fantastic view and lovely walks inside the old town, or you can have a great windsurfing and uh, kite surfing there. The beaches are also beautiful, so you get the pictures about Naxos, you can really get everything there. Now, the other island I would suggest is Skopelos. I visited Skopelos in the last August uh, before actually the pandemic and I was really surprised that uh, I didn't find any big crowd that usually in August you can find in most of the other island like Naxos or like Mykonos and not to talk about Santorini. I loved it. There is an old town with whitewashed houses. Uh, it's a little bit steep, you know, in the streets around, but absolutely gorgeous. And then you have the beaches on the north side of the island, which are really well connected by bus, so you can visit most of it without any problem, or rent a car and do your plans. I'm sure you already know Scopolis because it was featured in the movie. Oh, mamma mia! If you go back to the movie, you will have fun and you will discover how is this island absolutely gorgeous. Oh, by the way, I wrote dedicated guides for all of these islands I'm mentioning in this video, so you should check out in the video description for the link to them. Okay, let's keep going. And now let's move to the quietest islands for campus. The first one that I want to mention is Sifnos. Sifnos is about six hours, if I remember well, by ferry boat from Piraeus. There is no airport and that's why it's so quiet, most probably. I used to live in Athens and uh, one friend of mine said, wow, well, you should go there because you will have such a great time. In fact, I chilled out for a few days there. I loved it. 
If you stay to the south part of the island, you have a fantastic long beach, otherwise you can go north and you have the old town that gets actually a little bit busy in August, but besides August, really super quiet island. The second island I would suggest is Alonisos. I also visit Alonisos the August before the pandemic. And I tell you what, it's such a quiet island, absolutely amazing. The island itself is actually very, very big, but most of it is a national park, which means construction is only allowed in only a small part of it. You arrive by ferry boat in a tiny village, you can stay there or you can go to the old town more inside the island, and that's where you will find a model of a picturesque and characteristic village with more of an art scene over there. It's fantastic for the night, I think, over there because you get a nice sea breeze, but probably for the day you want to stay close to one of the many beaches or close to the village where you arrive with a ferry boat. And now, what are the most romantic islands for couples? What do you expect? Santorini, of course. Santorini is magical, it's absolutely fantastic, it's unique in the world, you have to visit. It's a must, but you know what, don't go there in July or August because it's absolutely packed. So it's better to go there and that's what I usually do either early June or from mid-September onwards. Santorini has the best restaurants with view, incredible, and the accommodation sometimes with these beautiful pools in the whitewash, caves that come from outside to inside to outside. It's a maze, but it's a beautiful maze. The other thing I have to tell you about Santorini is that it's the most expensive island in Greece. The beaches, oh, are not the best either. So in case you want to spend some time at the beach but still see Santorini, possibly you know stay a few days in Santorini and then for beaches take a quick ferry to either Naxos or Eos which is really next door. The other romantic island I suggest is Astipalia and if you never heard of it that's good because it's still a well-kept secret place in Greece. The reason it's not very well known is that there are not many flights going there but the old town is so romantic. Whitewash houses between the two bays, the famous windmills, absolutely gorgeous. I love it. There are a few also nice beaches, some of them are so isolated that probably you're gonna share them just with your partner. And now let's get into the best islands for beaches. You know, if you're traveling with your partner, Mykonos is a lovely place because it has amazing beaches all nearby. So you can really get a bus or a, you can rent your scooter and make in the day one or two beaches, fantastic, I love that. And if you're not into the Nile for Mykonos, just book outside of the old town and you will have a quiet time. The other possibility is to go to Corfu. And you know, we have this stigma that uh, all of these uh, Greek islands have to have a whitewash houses, but Corfu is not like that. Corfu is more like uh, almost an Italian island, and the reason is that um, the Venetians ruled there until 400 years ago, and that's why all of the constructions uh, look more Italian than typical Greek. Overall, uh, Corfu has amazing beaches and highly suggested. And again, it's uh, small enough to go around on your own or with a local bus. Both Mykonos and Corfu in August are very very busy and if you're looking for a place which is not as busy but still has beautiful beaches I'm gonna suggest to Astipalia. I already told you about Astipalia and the romantic part of my video definitely also for beaches over there. What about if you have to select an island for the best food? I tell you what, all of the islands have amazing food. But in saying that, I find Crete as the most progressive food. In which way? It has this nice influence from the Middle East. It's cooking with honey, something you don't find probably anywhere in Greece. I love it over there, especially Raffinum and Hios, two towns with fantastic old part of the city 
um, highly suggested for food and it's not only about food in the island of Crete you will find I think four or five wineries that you can travel there for example with a jeep safari and taste the wine sometimes taste the oil too I love Crete in this respect one thing that Crete is missing is probably the view so if you want to have your food and your dinner with a fantastic view guess what go to Santorini the view that you get of a caldera over there is absolutely unique, something that you will remember forever. So you are an active couple, you get bored at the beach and in the island generally speaking. You know what, there are two islands where you can have lots of adventures and activities. I talk already about Crete. Crete is a place where you can do everything you want. It's a huge island, of course. So you can go from amazing trekking on some of the most beautiful gorges in Europe. You have plenty of jeep safari possibilities. So many things happening there. The other possibility is to go to Paros, especially if you are into water sports, because this is one of the most famous islands in the world for wind. So you can do some amazing windsurfing and kite surfing. You have the most consistent wind, especially in July and August. That's when you have a Meltemi from the north. You wake up in the morning, by 11 the wind picks up, and by 2, boom, you get the 20 notes to go sailing absolutely fantastic I love my time there I enjoy so much doing windsurfing there and this takes me to the end of this video as I said check out the description down of the video to see all of the links to my guides to the island and that's where you find all of the information about the best areas to stay. I hope you enjoyed this video, put a like in case and I see you in the next video on Greece.